So we all know that impersonation is actually a very terrible thing in the society, not just Nigeria, the global world. Impersonation is something that can, you know, send somebody into a crime he or she did not commit. Now, a lot of people have been impersonating Mr. Peter Obi and all this while he hasn't said anything. But today he has come out openly to talk about impersonating, especially the one that happened yesterday while he was in the court. You and I know he flew straight from London to Nigeria and straight to the courtroom yesterday for the hearing of the presidential petition. While he was inside the court, there was something going on outside, which was the case of Apapa Lamidi and the commotion he was causing there in court yesterday. Now, I'm not just going to rush into the story. I'll read it directly the way he wrote it so that you understand why this whole impersonating thing is getting really, really out of hand. He posted this morning, I think about two hours ago, he said, my duplicate are still on rampage. They now mimic my voice and call people. There is no limit that people cannot go to cause mischief on their target. I've been a target both locally and internationally. Yes, it's no news. We heard of when he was... Uh, uh, at arrested in the UK for uh, being someone who has who is committing crime in the country. We also heard of the voice note, the audio voice notes of him and the general overseer of Winners Chapel. All of these things are the handwork of impersonators. Let's continue. The latest incident happened ye in Abuja yesterday, May seventeenth, at the court room, uh, the court of appeal premises of the presidential election petition tribunal venue where my attention was drawn to what was going on outside the courtroom. A report came to me while I was seated in the court that one Prince Mustafa Audu, son of the late governor of Kogi State, heard the obedient chief spokesman, Dr. Yunisa Tanko and some other spellbound castigating and talking down on me. Describing me as an ethnic and religious bigot, he claimed that I called him while I was in front of the office of his office on Tuesday morning at about 11 a.m. But suddenly cut off the phone after I spoke Igbo, and he Audu was unable to respond. According to him, Obi may have won help to empower some businessmen strictly because they were Igbos, and he wondered why Obi should aspire to lead the country he cannot accommodate other ethnic groups it was one of my ideas who aids who quickly alerted me on what was going on and i pleaded with him to go outside and tell the obedience who were with the man to kindly delay him until i come out of the courtroom after the court proceeding I met with Audu and he repeated the same story, adding that he was angry at me for cutting off the phone on him because he could not speak Igbo. He insisted that I was in front of his office in Abuja when I called. I then introduced myself again to him and told him, my brother, I did not call you and I could not have been on, in front of your office on Tuesday because I was not in Abuja and not even in the country at about the time you allege that I called you. I was arriving nice in France for a meeting by the evening of the same day I flew to London from another for another meeting and in fact had to breeze in to facilitate with my elder brother Dele Momodo on his 63rd birthday which we posted here. I only flew into the country this morning for this court section, the young man looking embraced and surprised at the same time added that the voice of the caller and everything sounded like mine. We exchanged pleasantry and took pictures. This is just one of the many desperate efforts to run down, run me down and tag me what I am not with the intention to gain some passive political mileage against me ordinarily i am not scared or worried about the competition provided they are within the legitimate rules of engagement 
But going as far as, as this is worrisome. It is quite very worrisome because this is certainly not the right way to develop a nation. It is in there of positive changes that will enable her to join the League of Nations that are moving forward. I appeal to the public to beware of not easily deceived with the cheap tricks of impersonating me for whatever ulterior intention. Peter will be. I'm going to post that video here where he was addressing this particular young man after the court section and after that we'll continue with Guys, you all saw that video and you saw how Mr. Peter Obi actually cleared up the allegation and everything level against him. Well, a lot of people are still doing, trying so hard to impersonate him. He cannot, Mr. Peter Obi is too lenient and you know, as someone who always likes to clear things, he will always want to come out and clarify the stories for whatsoever reason. Anyway, this one is coming from the uh, the one of the lawyers representing the Peter Obi petition, Mr. Kenneth Okonkwo, who is a former Nollywood actor and now a Lega juggernaut. He was in the court yesterday and he said so many amazing things from the courtroom. Even the story of a Papa Lamidi, he clarified some issues about that particular story. This is the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Please note, we do not own right to this particular clip. It belongs to Injenje TV. We are only sharing this video for fair use purpose and to share information. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop a comment. As in legal or yes, from legal? Legal. 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 The previous, the first one is done. All right. So you just work out from the, uh, from the legal and the, and the issue of uh, over 73 percent. Uh, 70% of the government yeah. provide. Thank you. Well, um, what transpired in the court today is really a sad commentary to the activity of the umpire that announced a result which they could not give the CTC to the people of Nigeria that voted for the election. How can you announce a result you don't have? That is what should trouble us. Because the law made it clear. By the time, and I'm talking about section 62, subsection 2 and 3 of the Electoral Act, before you even announce a result, you should have the CTC waiting, the complete from pulling unit to pulling unit, from ward to ward, from local government to local government, from state to state. You should have the CTC from the National Electronic Register of Election Results. Now, you have an INEC that two, three months after that could not give us 70% of the evidence they claim that they have. It is sad. And the court has taken judicial notice of it and has advised all parties to do the need for and i keep maintaining that INEC should come clean to nigerian people in court there's nothing like technical glitches the judges are not technicians they are there to deliver justice so what we are simply saying is the evidence of what you said you did give to us so we can prepare our case. Thank, Thank you. When is, the court, when, when is the next sitting of the court? Friday. Friday. Friday this week. Yes. 19th of May 2023. Was the issue of um, uh, online transmission addressed in court today? Not really because what we are saying in effect is that if we don't have the evidence because last time the court sat the council we are to meet to check all the documents and the evidence and know the ones that they will admit 
and the ones they will object to. So how can you go to such a meeting when you have not gotten the evidence, the official evidence that you need? So that's what we produced and presented to the court today. So we are optimistic that INEC will do the need for, give us all the evidence so that we can fulfill what we would have done before now. I don't want to remind you if you were in court, you will know some of those little, little tricks that they want to use to delay this because the issue of election is time bound. The Nigerians are wiser. We, I keep saying that we will not succumb to the blackmail of people who want to truncate this journey to a new Nigeria. The movement is, it is inevitable. Match to new suit in court. He is not a party to any suit in court. So how can he come and claim that any court gave him any order to do anything about what he's not a party to? He's neither a claimant nor a defendant. And the rule of law is very simple. The court does not even have jurisdiction to make an order in favor or against a person who is not a party to a suit. So how can an old man come out and say a court has given him an order to begin to be a leader of a political party? Which court? When you want to come to court to plead anything, you come with the order. So you just come on empty ground and you're making claim which you are not. And let me tell you about the suit. The suit has not even delivered any judgment. So nobody has even acquired any right from that suit. What the judge simply said last time is that he has jurisdiction to hear the matter. Nothing else. And some clowns are trying to claim an order which a court has not given. And like I said, the most disturbing is that a man who is not even a party to the suit. One uh, Mr. Pampas, what's that? One Mr. Uh, is it a Pampa? A Papa. A Papa. Something like a Pampa. Old, old chief priest. Okay, okay. Whatever it is. Good. As you can see, even his name is controversial. Yeah. I don't even understand the one to take. So, an old man that is 78 years, that the grandchildren should be looking or preaching to him to make make friends with God, mm. is coming to court to claim what he is not. Now, let me tell you again about the Constitution of Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And I have it. You cannot remove the national chairman of Labour Party except you have to talk yes. of the National Convention. Yes. Yes. Sorry, that's the position of the law. And again, no court has the right At all. to determine the leadership of any political party. Yes. It is settled by the Supreme Court. So when somebody comes to court, let me tell you something again. In Labour Party, we have three national deputy chairmen. And none of them has the right to assume the position of the national chairman without the authorization of the National Executive Council. And I'm talking about Article 13, if I can remember very well, 2B, XVI. It is only the National Executive Council that has the right to fill up any vacancy. And when you talk about discipline, if you go to the XVII, it's only the National Executive Council. Who are those men? I don't know who they are. We don't know them. My principal does not know them. I don't know them. And indeed, I don't want to know them. Yeah. And the other one purporting to be the publicity secretary. I have challenged him on a national television to tell the world how he came to become the public secretary, he has not been able to say it because he is not. So when you're claiming what you're not, who are you? You're an imposter. Yes. Yes. An interloper. So I want really. Nigerians to understand. No court gave order to Mr. Apampa mm. to ever assume any position. And let me make it clear. There is no, as long as the court is concerned, he is not a party to any court proceeding. He's not even a party at all. Yeah. So please, 
That is what we should note. Now, thank you very much for that uh, clarification. Now, on the matter today, obviously, last week, the, uh, last week, the case was adjoined to the for where, wait, 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 wait. The, where the parties would agree oh, on, the, on uh, certain issues. Now, we also hear today that uh, there were some um, documentations, about 70% of the documentation that was supposed to be provided by INEC that hasn't happened. Yes. So how would you break what, what actually transpired in the court? It is amazing, it is not surprising that an INEC that announced a result without Oh, That's the same news answer. Really. Mm, because I'm, you know, I uh, said so that I'm not getting the job, but well. <laughs> sure, I don't want to take on Thank you for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate your time here. Always finding our time to come check out my videos. I do really appreciate. Thank you for watching. See you guys on my next video.